back to the vegan runner and thanks for watching if you've been a fan of the channel for a while you'll know that i love trail running so when on running a shoe company that i've been a fan of for years released a new super cushioned all-terrain shoe that can rival the speed goat by hoka i just had to try it out before we continue i'm not a sponsored athlete i know i'm, I'm just as surprised as you are and i bought the shoe with my own money and nobody is paying me to make this review Okay, so with that out of the way, let's take a closer look at the specs for the Cloud Ultra. On are saying it's an ultra cushioned, ultra comfortable, ultra versatile trail running shoe. It has a double layer of Helion foam molded into the company's trademark Cloud Pods, a mission grip outsole, a two layer mesh upper and a wrap, almost sock like fit. An innovative new feature that I've never seen on another shoe before is the flip release system which allows you to loosen the laces a little at the flip of a switch. It has an 8mm heel to toe drop and in my size UK 7.5 it comes in at 270 grams which is pretty light going for a cushioned trail shoe. Right with the specs out of the way let's dive deeper into my experience with the shoe so far. So I've put the shoe through about 25 miles of varied terrain and weather from hard packed forest trails to hard grassy fields and some tarmac for good measure. And in typical Dartmoor fashion, we've had all four seasons in a week. We've had cold hail and rain and glorious warm sunshine the next day. So the shoes have seen a good mixture of conditions already. And one of the best things I think so far to come out of this shoe is how well the grip has performed in all of these terrains. I'm always a little bit skeptical of a, of a trail shoe that that, that claims to be able to do everything and the danger being of course that they can do it all but don't do any one of the kind of conditions very well but I'm glad to say that the grip was pleasantly comfortable on everything that I ran on and I was surprised that they could handle uh, wet grass and uh, through hail and rain and, and all that kind of stuff as well they performed pretty good. 
Um, I haven't been able to try them out on really muddy trails yet. I suspect they'll be fine on all but really slick surface mud, um, which is pretty typical of, of a trail shoe that looks a bit like this. The Hoka Speed Goat also suffers in, in really muddy conditions when things get really tough. Um, and I'd probably be looking for a different shoe if I was heading out in those conditions anyway. So hopefully before my full review, I'll have a chance to, to run them through some decent mud and see how they perform. Now they are a comfortable shoe to wear. They have a fully gusseted tongue and the wrap fit feels lovely and secure. No issues of heel slippage and the upper feels light and breathable. I like that I can just slip my foot in, lace up and go with these shoes. There's no fussing at all with, with the fit. The cushioning is, is quite interesting. Standing in them, you can definitely feel the softness, but running in them, it feels like quite a long ride, actually. Again, quite re reminiscent of the Speedgoat series by Hoka. And I think that the firmness comes from the speedboard, which is present in, in all of On's shoes in one form or another. And this is a piece of plastic that runs the length of the shoe. It's quite snappy, nothing like a carbon fibre plate, of course, but it does add some rigidity to the shoe. It's a pretty stiff kind of trail shoe. Interestingly, where I felt most comfortable in this shoe is either at a, a relatively comfortable pace for me, something between a, a 9 minute 30 mile or an 8 30 minute mile, something along those kind of lines, or anything under a 7 minute mile. Uh, anything in between that strangely felt a little bit clunky, like the shoe either wanted me to go like, really slow or really go for it. I don't mind really going for it. The relative light weight of this trail shoe feels great at pace and a couple of my workouts in the shoe were, were pretty tough, long intervals that were at quicker than half marathon pace. It's an interesting shoe. It's maximalist in the cushioning sense, but firm underfoot. So you're gonna feel the cushioning working, but only when you're putting your feet down onto some really hard kind of hard packed rocky terrain, otherwise you don't really notice it. What is worth mentioning at this point though is that occasionally it did feel a bit unstable, um, particularly when running on technical rocky terrain. A couple of times my ankle kind of rolled inwards or outwards. It wasn't enough to cause a mild ankle sprain or, or anything like that, but enough to kind of just throw me off my balance a little. I've been thinking about why this might be and it might be a combination of two reasons. The first is that they have redesigned the channels at the bottom of this shoe. So in the uh, Cloud Venture, I think, I think it was called, their first trail shoe, they had very kind of similar uh, channels at the bottom of, of the shoe, which <laughs> almost all on shoes I've tried have, have been like absolute devils at picking up little rocks and twigs and stuff that are getting stuck in these channels. So on have made some, some changes. They've made this channel wider and kind of shallower, I suppose, in the hopes that not so many rocks and things get picked up. Sadly, it doesn't really work. You can see the pics on, on your screen now, plenty of rocks and things getting stuck in there. And two, if you hit the pinnacle of a rock right in the middle of this channel here, I think your foot has to either roll one way or another uh, to find the ground. So that's one idea as to, to, as to why sometimes they might be a bit unstable. The second is that because of the speedboard and, and the max cushioning, perhaps your proprioception um, is lessened to an extent where you're not taking as much care about where you're putting your feet. So had I been wearing less cushioned, more minimalist shoes, which oddly are, are, are known for, then perhaps I would have been a bit more careful where I was putting my feet with the landing, not landing on those, on those strange rocks and you know, like the, the pinnacle hitting the middle channel here. My first pair of decent running shoes were on clouds and I fell in love with them immediately. They were lightweight, minimalist, fast, comfortable, breathable and really well built. At the time, for me, they were a really pricey shoe but everything about them said quality. Fast forward a few years and I've been hearing a lot about on running recently and the decline in build quality over the years with lots of reviewers complaining about the, the heel material fraying early on in the shoe's life or something going wrong with the shoe. Now, so early on, I haven't noticed any wear as yet as you'd expect after just 25 miles, but a couple of things did catch my eye when I was pulling the shoe out of the box. 
The first was about an inch long piece of thread that was coming out of the, the upper around the lace seam. It was like <laughs> about this big. Um, it, was, it was nothing crazy, but it was certainly the longest piece of thread, excess piece of thread that I've ever seen on, on a new pair of shoes. Nothing that, you know, a pair of scissors didn't sort out straight away and there's no sort of uh, malfunction with, with the seam at the moment. It's just a, a strange bit of uh, excess thread. The second bit was a scuffed or discolored, I think it's on, on that one, but a discolored eyelet that shaped like the, the on logo, which was like misplaced and then not correctly sunk into position. Oh, and uh, one of the, the lace holes hasn't been correctly punctured either, so I had to like pull a bit of the discarded material out of the hole itself. Now, none of these issues are major. It really is nitpicking, like just sort of really inspecting a brand new shoe. But is it just a few little signs which possibly point to some quality control issues somewhere along the line? And for our 160 pound shoe, I expect the shoes to be near perfect when you get them out of the box. The shoes proudly display the Swiss flag, which has long represented quality. And for me, it's one of the hallmarks of Unrunning and their shoes. Without a decently constructed shoe, they lose a lot of the prestige and what makes the company special for me. But right, okay, other than those small issues, there's nothing about the shoe that would suggest it's been made cheaply. It still looks and feels quality, just like my first pair of clouds. And I'm hopeful that the shoe will hold up, but it'll be interesting to see as the miles tick over and how the build quality gets on. And I'll let you know in my full review. Now then onto the quirky, flip release lacing system. Initially I was skeptical and I was thinking they'd come up with a solution to a problem that I've never had but you know interestingly it does kind of work. I haven't been on a really long run in these shoes yet but I can really see this being useful as a, a little feature on a, on a long training run or ultra races where your foot has swelled up and you just need that little extra room for your foot. The switches easy, really easy to adjust. You literally just flip it over and hey presto, your laces are that little bit looser. By the time I release my full review, I'll get a decent long run in them and put it to the test properly. But either way, I appreciate the innovation at a time when everything seems to be about carbon plates and bouncy foams. Another small innovation that I haven't seen in a lot of shoe brands, but I have seen in other shoes from on is this tiny piece of elastic material on the tongue here, which is designed to tuck the lace loops out of the way whilst running. I hate that feeling of large lace loops sort of flopping about on your shoe as you're running. So I really appreciate this attention to detail. I think it's a great little feature that I wish a few more uh, shoe companies would, would add to their shoes. Finally then, at this point, after just 25 miles, would I recommend the On Cloud Ultra? I think it's a definite maybe. If you get on well with on shoes and you're looking for something similar to Hoka's Speed Goat, or if you need a trail shoe to run a variety of different surface types, different trails, then I think this shoe is definitely worth a try. It's comfortable, the fit is great, and for a max cushion shoe, they've done really well to keep the weight down. The new lacing system is innovative, it's not enough, I don't think, to want to buy this shoe based on that alone, but it's a pretty cool idea. I'll put another 100 miles or so in these shoes and update you in a few weeks' time as to how they're holding up and how they change over time. But at this point, I'm undecided if this will be my shoe of choice when heading out on the trails over the spring and summer months. Right, I'd be interested to know how your experience with on running shoes has been lately or any other shoes that fit into this category that you think would be worth a try. Leave a comment down below and let me know. Thanks for watching until the end and until the next one, be the best you.